Mizuho today initiating coverage on the IT services sector, calling it the picks and shovels of AI. Analyst Dan Dolov recommending three stocks to buy in that space joins us now at Post 9. It's good to have you here. Hey, Scott. These are names beyond the bright lights, so to speak. Um, names like Accenture, EPAM Systems, and Globant, is that how you? Globant, yeah, Globant. Globant. Um, yeah, buys on all. Why are you looking here? So, yeah, I want to give credit to my uh, partner, Sean Kennedy, on this one, too. So we, we put a 100-page report on it. And, and I think that what people don't appreciate is everyone's, like, talking about the AI hype, but someone needs to do the work. And these guys do the work, right? I think you said it on the podcast yesterday. You know, when Pepsi hires, um, needs to, to get into AI, they're not going to go directly to Microsoft. They're going to go to someone who's going to implement Microsoft, implement SAP. Those guys are the picks and shovels. They're, at the, they're in the engine room of the boat. I you think one of the, you I think wrote one, about this in your latest newsletter, right? Yeah, I wanted to ask you, I think one of the most positive uh, features of these types of companies is how uh, CapEx light they are. So they have thousands of employees and they're technical employees, but they're not building data centers to meet this opportunity. So when there's a big wave of spending on AI, a lot of the money drops right to the bottom line. They become very profitable. Could you speak more on, on how that works and what we could expect here with these three names in particular? Yeah, it's a good point. And those are people-heavy businesses. And I think that's why, you know, there has been so much controversy. AI is going to take them, you know, it's going to take them out of business, et cetera. Well, we see this differently. Those, you know, people-heavy businesses, when demand picks up, they can very quickly, like, increase or decrease, you know, the amount of workers they have. And this is what gives them sort of that, you know, sort of the edge there uh, in terms of like the ability to work on AI. So that's how we see this happening. They're much better at protecting margins than someone who's capex heavy and has to, you know, build all this stuff. Are, are these stories? Do you are do you make the case that these stories are largely unknown, related to AI? Because over the last few months, these stocks have rallied a lot. So somebody must know something about the role that these companies are going to play in the building out of, of AI. Yeah, I think it's sort of because if you go back to last year to the AI hype and NVIDIA and stuff, the big bear debate on these names was that, you know, they're going to get disrupted by AI. And then people are starting to wake up to this and are looking. Let me give you an example. Uh, Ten years ago, people worried about the cloud. Accenture's cloud business went from $1 billion in 2012 to $32 billion, you know, wow. last year. So these guys, this is like the best example. The correlation between software and AI is like the R squared is like, or software and like IT services is 68%. So I think that's what people are waking up to, and that's why these stocks have started doing better in the, late, in the latter part of last year and early this year. Is the demand coming from large corporations, government? Where is it coming first, and then where do you see it going to? So it's it's both. It's 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 the beauty of it. It's across the board, right? You've got anyone anywhere from Pepsi, like Disney, is Globant's largest customer. So, had, you know, we did some analysis. Ex Disney, they would have done even better because Disney had some issues. So it's literally across the board. It's like an ETF on AI. Like, that's the way to think about so, it. So, Rod, you ETF own, on AI. I mean, you actually own Accenture, yeah. which is a buy uh, from Dan with a price target of $426. Yeah, look, I agree with you. On our, we've owned Accenture for a long time, and the idea was you get the huge operating leverage because when they get the demand come in, it's variable costs. Exactly. And, and then they can pass that cost on, and then once they're in there, they're in there for a long time. And globally, Accenture's everywhere. So we like that when you said it was cloud, and then they do the BPO as well. So you have that offset of, of a company that is, is really asset light. I, I wanted to uh, ask you about one other aspect of this. People trading AI, they've been forced into mega cap stocks. NVIDIA is a trillion dollars. Uh, Alphabet, Meta, these are gigantic stocks. Managers, like people that have a style box they have to conform to, they want to be in AI, but they're a mid-cap manager or a small-cap manager. These names work for them, and there aren't a lot of them. So there's not a lot of competition for capital amongst, let's say, mid-cap managers. Look at a Globant. What is it, $11 billion yeah, in, in market cap? Speaking, yeah. So this is like in the wheelhouse of managers that have been watching this AI trade go crazy, and they've been on the sidelines. Do you think that'll be a big catalyst for why these stocks will work this year? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's sort of waking up to that next wave. I think what you're describing, Josh, is sort of the next wave of AI. Okay, I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm too late on these names, I but here AMD. I, I what missed. What I do? Exactly. And, and by the way, you don't have to take, you know, company-specific risk or, you know, when, you, when you're buying these companies, it's like the ETF thing. You don't have to take company-specific risk. They'll implement NVIDIA, they'll implement Microsoft, they'll implement, you know, anything that's AI, and that's kind of the, the lower risk to getting exposure to AI, and that's kind of the crux of our work. 
Uh, Weiss, you have an under the radar name that you have your eye on too, right? Well, I, I've actually owned it for a while. It's VRT, VRT. So the, uh, the new data centers, and you need new data centers for AI, that the racks, which Vertiv makes the racks, and they make, more importantly, the cooling system. So the racks run a lot hotter because they'll use 60 kilowatts of power you know, per rack versus 5 to 10 for traditional data centers. They're also three stories tall, the data centers. So I was looking for a picks and shuffle way to play data centers. Data centers cap rates are 3%. That's great for sovereign, some institutions, but not for me. So Vertiv is a $20 billion market cap. The chart looks phenomenal, Josh. Look at it, and I think it's actually a pretty good takeout candidate, but the future for them is extremely bright. It's not compellingly cheap, but I think the scarcity value is very meaningful there. So I've owned that for about a month and a half or so. And look, they'll report mid-month. Uh, maybe, you know, they're over the skis a little bit. I doubt it. But if the stock comes in, I'd definitely buy more.